Ah. Got it. <laughs> oh, hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to another installment addition to Live, Use, Brunch, and Munch. And I am here. Well, first off, my name is Ciara Wimby, and I am the um, CEO and founder of Live You Nonprofit. I am also the physical wellness coach, and I am here with who? Tell me, ladies, who's in the building? <laughs> who's in the building? <laughs> <laughs> it is I, the one with the cootie free kisses, <clears throat> the mental wellness coach, Sisterly Beckham. <laughs> And hello, everyone. I'm Stephanie, the spiritual wellness coach. Welcome. Look, she didn't do the spiritual wellness coach. You know why? Because our topic is something of importance to talk about. So I have to have a little bass in my voice to let you know I'm oh, serious. Oh, oh so Ooh, bass yeah. in her voice. Well, tell us, tell us what the topic is today. <laughs> Speak so with the authority. The topic today is what is being accountable? Accountability, mm. people. So when talking about accountability, I'm sure everybody has their own definitions of it. We can Google it, but it's pretty much taking responsibility for your shit. Mm. Taking responsibility for your shit. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And it's the ugly part that people don't really want to talk about because those are the ugly parts that keep you awake at night. Those are the ugly parts, that little person in your head, because it's a few of y'all in your head, right? Mm -hmm. That beautiful. talks about how it's okay. You had to do this. You understand. But really, you know better. You knew better. You're trying to justify your actions when you knew better. No, take accountability for your shit. So I, I could, I had to that's, put some that's, that's the That's the definition today. <laughs> <laughs> no. I had to put some bass in my voice because I need to let you know I'm standing with my chest today. So. <laughs> okay, okay. That hair is on those chests too. Why are you saying uh -oh. it? <laughs> right, I'm saying it with my chest. <laughs> I'm saying it with my chest. I need y'all to understand it's, it's serious because there's so many people that talk about being accountable and, uh, and talking to others about being accountable, but are not practicing what they preach. And you can't talk, I mean, well, you can because people are doing it, but you can't talk about how much you've healed and how much you've gotten through various things in your life. And when these tests come back to test you, to see if you've gotten through, because see, the spiritual world is like that. They, I they know come for you. They come for you hard, real hard. Mm -hmm. So when they come for you, they like, hey, I don't know how y'all spiritual life be, but mine be like, hey, boo, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing, boo? I be like, where you come from? Mm -hmm, I brought friends. What you doing today? I was going to be in the house. Mm -hmm. Stop not. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Now I'm outside. I ain't even <laughs> want to come outside. <laughs> I had my slippers on. Did you, I, did you magically go outside? Like how I magically? Right. I already told y'all about the rain today. Like that just caught me off guard. Like I didn't understand rain and cold at the same time. I didn't get that concept. I knew it happened in real life. But living in Arizona for so long, that don't come together. So at least mm -hmm. not often. And, and it, when it does, everybody know you stay in the house. But out mm -hmm. here, people is out having life. And I didn't understand that. So that was a wake up <laughs> call. Um, but when your people jump in and they tell you, you know, um, this is what you need to do with your space. This is how you need to move forward. And you do not listen. Woo, if you do not listen, mm -hmm. those consequences come back so hard and they hurt. And I remember telling a person once before, people that are, are not meant to be in your life will not be there. They will be removed by choice or by force. And if they have to be removed by force, you're going to be hurt in the process. So make the choice and don't take that pain on. So, yeah, I have to say it with my chest today because it's about to get real. This whole month is real. I'm going to pass the mic on over. Ooh, okay. Don't but. want it. It's hot, hot potato. <laughs> <laughs> so what is accountability? Like she's being accountable for y'all shit in Stephanie words <laughs> <laughs> well damn um I guess the, the thing is what does it look like it's it's so many different look it's levels to this shit it really is and so um Stephanie's looking at it from a, a personal level of being accountable for your actions with 
others. I guess so. If we're gonna take it from that um, swing, I, I guess emotional being account being accountable for your emotional health. That's always a big one for me. Um, when someone says, "Well, you made me feel like," let's can we say that sentence out loud? I made you feel. Hmm. I didn't know I had the the capability of putting a feeling or emotion behind that. I, I didn't. I didn't know I was responsible for the way you take things. And even though it's true, it's happened. You know, we I've been there myself before. Well, you made me feel like this. Nobody gives you permission to make like you have to give someone permission to make you feel any kind of way. So I think when we talk about accountability on my behalf, I want to talk about emotional accountability. It's how you put your emotions on others or don't hold yourself responsible for the emotions that you, that are, that come to, that come, that, that arises when something happens and then you have these explosive reactions and then want everybody else to deal with them, but want to play victim mm. after you have um, emotionally exploded on everyone and not everybody has to pick up the pieces for you. I don't like that. I don't mm -hmm. like that at all. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think I'll come from the, the stance of emotional um, accountability this time around. And I'll yield the mic. Well, hello. Mm -hmm. So um, when I think about accountability, I always think about it in terms of um, self. I, I, and I think about it in terms of personal. Um, I definitely like what both of you all said. I definitely like that part. Um, with the, I don't have control over your feelings. And so that's that part of, again, still you be responsible for yourself, you know, own your words, own your feelings, own your stuff. And um, I, I think about in terms of accountability with how I'm showing up in the world. So, you know, as, you know, Stephanie said, you know, own your shit. So, how am I showing up in the world uh, and not necessarily for the people out there, like what I've done to them or how I'm interacting with them, but more so for myself. I am always, as you all know, I've said it 500 million ways, 500 million times. I am an only child. I, my focus is generally on me first and other people second. And so I'm accountable to the things that I say I want to be, do, or have? And am I showing up in a manner that makes me represent myself in the best light? Am I showing up, uh, if I say I want to be, you know, a firefighter when I grow up, am I uh, aligning myself to the things that it's going to take for me to become a firefighter? What am I doing to show that I am accountable to the things that I say um, not to others, but mainly to myself. If I say I'm some type of person, am I behaving in that manner on, I will say most of the times. I mean, everybody can be everything all the time. You know, that's the part of you have the um, ability to um, improve. So I'm always thinking about honoring the words to myself. So I think that's, and I don't say I think that's where I'm coming from. Everything is about honoring the things I say I'm going to do. So if I say I'm going grocery shopping today, it shouldn't be two days from now. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, well, I'm finally get to it. Well, why am I not honoring my personal commitments to me? I think that's major. Um, when we. Most people don't even recognize how they put themselves last. That's never been your issue. We know <laughs> um, that. That's why that's we that. live you, you, not others. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but to even the first thought is not putting self first in many people's thought process, especially when you're a mother or, you know, your daughter and you have these responsibilities of being responsible for others, emotional, physical, spiritual health. Um, you oftentimes put yourself on the back burner to say, hey, let me make sure everyone else is good. And then after everyone else is good, then whatever whatever's left, I'll give it to myself. And so if we want to take on that type of accountability of why do I don't I honor my word to me, that's a whole different battlefield. Like that's a, 
a battlefield most won't step on because it's just too much. It's 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 a big mirror that you're trying to put in our face about all the do's or don'ts or the way I'm I want to mentally I want to live one way, but physically it just don't align. And so now I now I have mayhem going on or I'll isolate and nothing's getting accomplished. So I'm stagnant because what I want mentally doesn't align with what I see physically. And that's a different level of accountability that you probably want to go get help with. If you if you don't if you haven't mastered that and you want you want you might want to reach out to Live You Team or um or even more to do just deeper work out your therapist or whatever to do that deeper work and say why haven't you been putting yourself first? Um that's a major factor on not just women lives on both men and women mm-hmm. on learning how to put themselves first because they don't even they never had an example of it one so they don't even know what it looks like when it's done and then once you start you have to realize in that transition of trying to put yourself first people will see you and they will start oh that's selfish yeah because I, so. I lord knows i've heard that one a million times and i say so okay that's fine thank you you know Any people are selfish it? quote unquote for the wrong reasons anyway so mm-hmm. um and and to add to what you're saying Cicely, um when you said you know the mental and the physical it don't align it makes me think you know where's the spiritual space where's your spirituality they usually that? not there at all if exactly. they, those two don't align Exactly. And so when you're missing your spiritual space, where's your anchor? Where's, where's your where's your roots? You don't know where they are. You can't find them. And so now it makes me think of a person clinging to whatever it is that they can to call something normal whenever that object or thought process or theory that they're hanging on to that's normal. It's mm-hmm. really not. It's, it's, a, it's a congregated mess of trauma that's wrapped around in a pretty bow of normalcy. And therefore those group of congregated trauma people or environment or situations or whatever, even family are moving forward in life like that. God forbid that you decide to step outside and say, you know what? I thought you guys said the bow was gonna be blue today and not red. And they say, well, it's okay, it's still a bow. But details matter, right? Mm-hmm. It, it, those details matter. So where's your spiritual space? Where's your roots? And so if you do decide to step off and say, you know what, I want to do the blue bow instead of the red because I think it looks better, you may be looked at like the black sheep now because you don't want to go within the norm. You don't want to follow this normal process because you choose to do something different. So therefore, you will be shunned. You will be talked about. You will be, uh, you know, excommunicated or whatever. But I, I promise you, it's not a bad thing. I know it makes me think of something like, I want to say Game of Thrones. It's coming to my head, but it's not really Game of Thrones. I don't know what. I don't know. Maybe uh, X Factor or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But I know what you're talking about, but I don't yeah. know. The, the, uh, Analogy. The, the, yeah. So... I think it's really that's that's another good statement is saying just like I said when you recognize that you're the one that's changing and that um you said something about this big old ball of trauma that's what a lot of people trauma bond with yeah. you and then you're stuck in that space of regular that's what people say oh I thrive in chaos do you but it you know it has its place but it, it can be the only place you have like now. again life is about you know a balance i want to read you all something real quick can i just jump in just a second mm-hmm. i want to read something um that i saw on facebook um and it said those who believe they are without darkness darkness are asleep in the light mm. and so you know this goes back to something we always talk about well, well i don't know if i always talk about it on here but I, I know i definitely talk about it offline in my personal life where people are always like i'm a good person <laughs> and so that's something you know people like to to own as them their selves and so but we're both we're you know we're we're dark we're light we're good we're bad you know we all have we're complex but what is it that you're going to i guess anchor to or you know stand in and then be accountable for whoever that person is mm-hmm you know, I say all the time, uh, bad shit happened to good people too. So you could be a good person all you want to, but you can make a bad choice. Now, depending on the, the impact of that choice, does that now make you a bad person? 
instead of focusing on good and bad, focus on your values, focus on what it is that you hold dear to you, your truth, what makes you, you, and amplify that, improve upon that, it, grow from it. And that's only taking accountability for your actions, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And the ugly is the shadow work too. I mean, the bad can be the shadow work as well, but the ugly is the part that we are ashamed of. We don't want to admit that that's the ugly part. We can't, because we see ourselves as good in, people. Right. Mm -hmm. We see ourselves as good people. And we know we're not supposed to do this ugly shit, but yet we see ourselves doing it. It's like we're on the outside looking in and we see us doing this ugly move and we're not supposed to be doing it. We know we don't want to do that. We don't want to do it done to us, but yet we're doing it to other people. And so this one ugly scenario or situation, we're going to keep quiet and we're going to keep it to ourselves and we're not going to tell anybody about it. We're not going to talk about it, even with ourselves, with our people that's in our head, because, you know, we got a bunch of people over there. So we're not even going to have a meeting about it in the house. We're not even going to talk about it in the room. We're not going to write it down. We're just going to have it over there. But then what happens when another situation comes about that's ugly? If you have a, one situation that's ugly and you have another situation that's coming about that's ugly, you now make it a choice. Make the choice on whether you want to do the opposite or you want to follow in that same pattern. Because if you do that again, now it becomes a pattern. It's a behavior pattern now. When you say that, it makes me think about the house. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm always, you know, when I talk about, I don't really clean my house. Like, you know, I, I'm doing clearing. Mm -hmm. And so it makes me think about closets and drawers and things. And so a lot of times we store things in the closets and the drawers in the pantries and so you don't necessarily see it so if that door is closed but the rest of the house is spotless mm -hmm. you're like i have a clean home right it's organized it's everything is great but heaven forbid you open up the closet door and all type of shit fall out and you're like what the hell is this i, I got skis i ain't never seen before where they come from <laughs> right I guess. and so mm -hmm. you know that's the the stuff that you're talking about that you're putting away to the side that you're that you're hiding so being accountable did you really clean up your house or did you just clean Move up away. the part that people were going to come and see but then the part that you know please don't let them ask to hang their coat up because <laughs> if they do it's no room to hang <laughs> up the coat and I don't even know what's going to come out because when I knew they were coming I just stuffed everything in the closet so mm -hmm. that it could appear that I had this wonderful home, this wonderful environment to invite them into. I think that's very common <laughs> on so many levels. <laughs> We're all guilty of it. Um, it's just, it's a part of the process. It's a part of just admitting, like you said, I think at first it's calling a thing a thing. Because if for so long, let's just say in that family line, where we have this balls of trauma, this is what we do. So I don't even know it as being wrong. I don't mm -hmm. know it that it's, this is what we do. It's our, it's our house. And we come around, you know, we keep it clean on the outside, but this is just what we've done for years, for generations. This is what we've done. And so now here you come, like, y'all need to like have a garage sale. <laughs> y'all right. need to move some of this stuff out. And they like, what you mean? Like, we need these things. This is how we survive. This is this. Um, this is our way of being. And you coming in, you trying to switch that up. So now it's mayhem. Right. Like, it's confusion because I know what you're saying is right, but you're just telling me I need to do it, but not showing me what it looks like. How do right. I do that? How do I untangle those? Physical connection. Exactly. So it's just so many people are already just, that's just, they, they're oblivious to that is mess. They just mm -hmm. like, oh no, that's ours. It's organized. What you mean? I know where it is. I know how to find the broom. I know how to find it. Don't go in there. Uh -uh. If you go in there, you're not going to be able to find it. But I know exactly where it oh, is. Oh my goodness. Love that one. Love that mm -hmm. one. <laughs> that's so, I think I said that was what I did one time in my job. Actually, when we were in person, everything's a mess, but I knew where everything was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I was also like, I think maybe a few days after that, I had like a, a medical emergency and I had to be out of work for like two weeks and nobody could find nothing. So yeah, yeah. don't work all the time. It's a, it's a thing. And untangling that is, is work. Like you said, that's that shadow work. 
that you talk about, but sometimes people don't even know that it's a thing. Mm-hmm. So some people, we we have the privilege because we're doing some work on, on our we've own. We've done our own, right. We've done you our know. own personal we've work. So work. It's, it's easy to spot. And you be mm-hmm. looking at it like, ooh, I'm not going over there. Dude, let, go. let that go the game. Yeah. yeah I'm a, ooh, go home nice. and your bitch fit a song. Like, I, yeah. friend, uh, a loved one had died in their life and I had gone over to their house and before this loved one had died they lived together and so the loved one was wanting the house was always spotless and mm-hmm. so you used to seeing that and going to the house and so when the loved one had passed away and I went over and it looked like the house literally had thrown up mm-hmm. and I was like uh you ain't okay. No. Like no. your house is letting me know everything that's going on inside your mind. Mm-hmm. And you know that your loved one would be livid mm-hmm. if they had came into this house and saw this house looking like this. And I was like, okay, so so not only am I saying it and I'm pointing it out. So when you talk about, you know, let's demonstrate. Mm-hmm. So now I'm over there like, all right, let's get some garbage bags. Let's, you know, start getting stuff that getting stuff up, you know, cleaning mm-hmm. things away, blah, blah, blah. Thought I left this person in a good space. Come over the next week. It threw up two times more than it had the first time. It was like, oh, what you thought was, you, oh, you thought you was going to come over here and help out? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me tell you how we, we are really about to act out now. I was like, uh, mm-hmm. what, what mm-hmm. happened last week and uh, this week? Just some more stuff has taken place in your mind because mm-hmm. I can see it. You're demonstrating it. And they were like, no, I'm I'm actually better. I'm, okay, and it could be because maybe you just you know got rid of some more extra stuff and, and right, it's possible. So I said, okay, well I'm gonna help you a little bit. This time. I'm gonna help you a lot of bit this time. Help you a little bit. Then the next time I went, it was still like that again. I said, well, you want your own? Yeah. <laughs> you need to yeah. figure that out. It's like I tell everybody, you get two times, two and done, because <laughs> I can't. It's, it's only, and I know that people need more support and help than you know two times. That's not your job. But that right, but that's not my job. My 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 part as as a friend because again, this is not you know me being in the space of coaching somebody or anything. As a friend, it's only so much I can do, and I'm real quick to let you know oh, that's outside of my uh, scope of duties and what I can handle. So you may need to go see somebody, and I think that would be really great for you. <laughs> right. I think acknowledging it though, like you said, if once we see it, we like, oh yeah, I can help. But if our, at that point are we being enablers because because we acknowledge it, don't mean that they acknowledge it. So they like, well, I'm just gonna take whatever you gonna. So now it's now then we get frustrated with them. Like, look, you're not getting up and doing what you gotta do. This is your life. This is not my thing, you know. But we be so invested that we get now. Cause now you're making me feel some type of way. Making right? me right. feel right. That accountability. Are are they really making you feel exactly? They, they're being right. consistent with who they are. But now you choosing to say, "Hey, I've overstepped my boundary, and, and I want to take being, control right. of this situation, and I don't have the control that I want." So now I'm angry that you're not doing anything for yourself. When I could have just been like, "That's crazy" in the first place. Say, you, say how you normally say it. <laughs> Say how you know. Say Man, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I, ah, that's crazy. The shit out of you. That's crazy. Because I'm not stepping over there into that mess. Because the thing is, if you know it's a mess, you talk about it. Then you take accountability yeah. for the mess. Mm-hmm. And then once you take accountability for it, say, hey, it is a mess. Then that's the space that I know we're in that we can start to develop strategy on how to right. get out of this mess. But until you can visibly say, hey, it is mess and it needs to change, I'm not stepping in. I'm I'm not I'm not offering anything. And so you can recognize it that I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I can help support that. But me by myself coming in, calling it out. Now, I understand. Uh, I understand when you when we talk about mess, you may they may not even see it. You may not even see it. It may it may look normal because the person or the situation at hand is it looks great. It's it's saying all this, 
little, you know, happiness endings or whatever you want to, you know, whatnot. It's, it looks nice. It looks comfortable. It looks fun. It looks like a great time. But in reality, it's not. You'll get those little bitty hints. You'll get those little bitty hints. And I, I, my, my spiritual people came in and, and they snatched me up out of stuff. So trust me, it, when you want to move forward and your people come in and snatch you, be like, nah, not today. You, you feel some way, but they don't be caring. They don't be caring. I know my people, they don't be caring. But um, it's funny you say about the house. Um, I actually, and this was some years back, I remember walking into somebody's house one time and it was spotless. There was no, there was nothing that came out the closet. It was beautiful. But when I walked in, I felt the chill and I was like, ooh, something's missing. And the person looked at me and they was like, what are you talking about? I was like, I don't know, something's missing. And they just couldn't, tell me exactly what it was until like months later it was like a bunch of stuff that was happening behind the scenes and what was missing was love it was love that was missing out of that house and I instantly felt the chill because you could feel the coldness you could feel the bitterness you could feel the anger and the hurt and the pain I felt all of that but in the midst of in a relationship or when you're with somebody in a household and the home is a place of then right at least for me it is my home is my place it's of then it's it's love. We finna laugh. I might make fun of you. You might make fun of me. Whatever the case may be, your home is warm. It's love. It's a comfort spot. But when I walked in there, I didn't feel any of that. I, mean, I was just like, something's missing. I can't even tell you what it was. And months later, I ended up finding out all the mess that came out. And it was to do with missing love. And nobody wanted to talk about it. It was swept underneath the rug, hidden somewhere. So a lot of that mess you may not see it, but you'll feel it. Like your inner beings, you'll feel it. So listen to your sixth sense. Listen to yourself. Listen to the, the signs or listen for the signs. Look at the signs. If it say stop, don't run into it to get hit in the head with the stop sign. It really do say stop. It says also in Spanish. It means stop too. So stop. <laughs> It say like alto in Spanish. Right, I'm like, wait, what? It say like sopranos. And it... Stop. Oh, my Stop. God. They don't know what I'm going to say. They don't know what I'm going to say. No, we don't. We don't. No, we don't. <laughs> I don't Catch think... your back, though. I'm, I'm going to be a soprano today. Right, I appreciate yeah, we're gonna that. Yeah, we going to take the tennis. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you. Appreciate you. But you, okay, you're right. I, I, I love the way you said you like it looks normal. That was something mm -hmm. major. It looks normal. I'm like to the untrained eye. Right. Oh. It, it, you, it was clean. This the, the closets were spotless. Mm -hmm. Like that's a whole nother something else that takes place that you're like Absolutely. it looks fun. It feels fun. It feels nice. It looks fun. You having laughter and good time, but you know. You know, you you get you get that feeling, and I you don't listen to it. Something out of place in my house. Mm. On purpose. <laughs> Try to have something out of place. And let me tell you, why. she do. She be having a cow out of place. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a, a, a a cow rug that, for whatever reason, Stephanie feels like it is her duty to straighten up. Like, and oh my god, I got to straighten up stuff in your house like she's accountable for my rug in my house you're not so and i don't mean to it's just i don't it's, it's that one little shoes. bitty corner it's that one little bitty corner like you can just just nothing <laughs> and and i purposely do things like that throughout my house because life isn't always perfect because life isn't always going to present you exactly the way you want it to be or the way you want it to look. So when I'm cleaning up my house or clearing out my house or straightening up my house or whatever it is, um, I'll see something that, that looks out of place. And I'll say, oh, well, I should just leave that there and keep on going. Because that's what life is. There's, there's always the something that pops up in life or jumps out of place or, you know, you think you have your steps. I know that's how I used to be. You know, I got my step one, two, three. And I'm like, why did it go one, two, 20? Like what, wait a what, or one, two done. And now you got to go somewhere else. Right. So they used to always very much confuse me because especially through grammar school. And I'll say even like high school, you're taught. These are the steps. This is how it works. This is what it's mm -hmm. going to be. And so you 
have been programmed into that thought process. And so you follow it, you believe that if you do all the right things and if you do everything perfectly, you're going to get whatever your outcome that you want to happen. And again, grammar school, high school, for the most part, it would reveal that. Then one day you like, okay, life is great. All I have to do is A, B, and C, D, and E, F, and G, and I will get my results and my outcome that I want. And then you don't get it. And then you having a breakdown because mm-hmm. you like, what the hey just happened? Why am I not getting it? I follow every, hold on, let me reread these instructions. I know I right. said A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and then it's not happening. So throughout my house, I literally try to represent what I'm actually feeling inside, but also what, how the world shows up too. So unexpected things may take place. So I unexpectedly just leave stuff around that doesn't go in that place or doesn't look right there because that's life. It's just, it's unexpected. And I'm like, oh, that's out of order. Okay, well, life is out of order. Now, I understand um, when you do things and, and when you go through those steps and it doesn't work out for you that way and you think, why is this happening to me? And then you want to go blame the higher power. First of all, he didn't even check his voicemail. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh. We gotta fit it first of all. <laughs> he didn't check his voicemail. Calm down. Okay. Oh. It was a few prayers in, ahead of you that he had to work on. So be patient. Second, didn't you do some ugly stuff a while back that you thought that nobody see? That, the that stuff that you got hidden in your closet. That, that, right. Then didn't, didn't you do something? Then you thought nobody was gonna talk about it? Is that what that, that's what you, that's what you thought but you But I'm about. a good person. <laughs> Because see, that, yes. that self-accountability thing does not... Because mind your business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't you talk to me about what I'm talking to him about and what right. I did. That's not your right. business. I'm just, you know, you that term, you reap what you sow is a very true term. Now, it may not happen in the manner in which you are, are, are used to, but you do reap what you sow. So your consequences, there's always a consequence for every action that you take, good, bad, yeah. and ugly. Yeah. It doesn't matter. So make sure when you are making choices, you're making sound choices and you're okay with those choices. You got to be okay with, you know, I'm just going to do a, do some ugly stuff today. You got to be okay with that. You got to be, okay be okay with, with the, You got to be okay with the consequences yeah. that come with it because you knew what you was doing. You but sometimes I say. think that it, when you're doing things, even if it's ugly, if you okay with it internally, it's going to turn out right because you okay with mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. It's when you know that you have a direct conflict of interest <laughs> internally it. where yeah. it takes it. That's why, you know, it's like you, you see, let's say quote unquote bad people. And you're like, why their life is so great? Why is everything going so well for them? I'm a wonderful person and nothing's happening. Wonderful I don't do nothing life. to nobody. I don't do nothing to nobody. Well, That's one. they don't. They they doing bad stuff, and they like this is this how you supposed to get it? I, you know, and this is what it is, and I'm okay. What you supposed with to be it. doing to these people? Right, and I have no, I have no internal conflict. It's when your again mm-hmm. your mental and your physical mm-hmm. clashes is when you are going to have problems in your life if you are not internally um peaceful you will have uh, a whole bunch of chaos outside of you but if you are internally peaceful no matter what it is you good that, somebody that's said true i'm sorry go ahead no no somebody said literally the other day like you cannot know internal peace unless you know external war mm. and so tell me more about that that just sounded about fascinating that. i felt all of that look at me going back to 23 and 20 i'm sorry go ahead <laughs> so you can unless you have waged war or even fought war then you don't know what peace really is mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. those that really have that nature like i'm gonna let it what they say water off a duck's back those are people who have waged and fought wars that they like i know that it's not worth it mm-hmm. like my peace is, is, is more expensive than that. Mm-hmm. And so 
when you go about that it with saying it that way you like you know what i've been in enough wars to know i don't want one right now mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. so Absolutely. that's, that's some accountability that is major but you cannot know peace if you do not know war mm-hmm. and so because then you start to pick your battles mm-hmm. so if i'm going to this battlefield knowing like you said it's hmm, that's gonna fuck up my conscience i'm gonna think about this for a little while so now i know what's you know like you said what's on the other side of it i know what I, the price i'm willing to pay for that and so because I know what that war looks like mentally, it, it may not even be a physical war, but I know what it looks like spiritually. I know what it looks like mentally. I'm like, I'm going to hold my peace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Y'all got it. Mm-hmm. You know, go ahead. I know the old me probably would have been rah, rah, rah. The the more wiser me is like. Mm. Well, it's just five today. Good. I'm going to give you some ice cakes. You can go slide on that ice. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. I'm a slippery slope. Let you go. I'm going to let you go today. And that's literally what it looks like. So um, when we start to say we take an accountability, it's like those that start to take accountability because they fought many wars. You got to learn some things because going through some things helps you, like you said, um, work on your improvement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're going through something right now, be okay with it because Mm -hmm. you may get to a point where you're tired of going through those things and then you're like you know what at some point i gotta stop blaming everybody else back to you know in the beginning where mm-hmm. we can't keep saying everybody else doing if you're the common denominator of everybody you gotta say well what is it that i'm doing that's causing this mm-hmm. oh that's me taking accountability for as you know the famous uh stephanie has said my shit so <laughs> i mean that so you have to, you know, it, but it's okay. So it's okay to be in the fight right now mm-hmm. and not and, and not even be ready to get out the fight because you may need to go through those lessons mm-hmm. and that's all good. You know, maybe we've already been through enough lessons and that's not to say that we don't still have a couple more fights we got to go through. No, let's not say that. Don't, don't, it it back. Back. don't lie, it is. It's, it's a whole bunch of them because there's levels mm-hmm. to this shit. Right. Always. Oh, so, Stephanie, what did you say the other day when we were talking? I don't know what we were talking about. Uh, new levels, new devils. New levels, new devils. Oh, my goodness. It was like, what? What? Each level okay. you elevate, there's a new devil on that level waiting for you to pass through them. Mm-hmm. And you will go through the same the same experiences you or obstacles you went through to get to that next level. It's just going to be bigger and better and smarter. So you have to be bigger, better, and smarter too. So yeah, new levels, new devils. Sonic the Hedgehog tried to prepare y'all every time Robotnik ass popped up. Let you know. It's time to go to a new level. You went all this time, didn't see him. Boom, level 10. Here he comes. Right. Dun, 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 dun. Like, without like, fear. He, he back again. Oh my God. He get back again. Thought so, I was yeah, I, I, You know, I have some other words behind that, but I can't say that on this one. But <laughs> please don't. <laughs> like, what? He back again. Oh, okay. Let's get going, people. Come on, team. Let's run. So no, it's time to fight. Shoot. Yeah. You know, run and fight. Fight. Deal with really deal with your stuff. Get deal, yeah, deal with your shit. Deal with your stuff. Deal with the things that you put yourself through. Don't beat mm-hmm. yourself up about it because as we all, as we have said, everybody goes through whatever it is they go through to elevate in their life or to learn the lesson. We're all gonna go through it. Don't beat we yourself all up. Are gonna go through it. Don't every beat time you, yourself up. Please don't beat yourself up. Every time you ask for a new version of you, you're gonna go through it. Every mm-hmm. time you 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 set a new goal or you want a new, you know, something new in your space, you're going to go through something to say, one, are you ready for it? Or two, it's preparing you for it. And can you handle so, it? Every time you say you heal, every time you say you heal that you've done the work, the spirit comes back and tests you to see if you really have Man. learned. And, and I'm Listen. a true testament of that at this moment in time. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, I got it. I got it. They're like, no. See, because my, my spirit people, they cuss at me. So they so we we they cuss, they smoke cigarettes, they throw shoes. So it's different <laughs> over here. <laughs> Girl, yeah, flip flop. Aggressive. Flip-flop today. <laughs> yeah, they are. Flip-flop that's flip-flop she hard headed. That's why. So they gotta be hard with her. 
That's what happened. They're like, oh, you want to fight? I'm like, no, not today. <laughs> oh, I think I'm just going to go. No, you want to fight? No, I, I, I think oh. I'm going to turn the other cheek. No, it's okay. No, you don't got to turn the other cheek. <laughs> you ain't got no more cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> so your people know, your people know. So you can't sit up and say you're a healed person. Being a, being a spiritual person is work. It is a lot of work. Being mental and physical, work. All of this is work. It's not easy. And we may make it look easy, but that's because we're also self-aware. We know our limits. We know our boundaries. We enforce our boundaries and we know what we need to remain firm on. So it, it's always new devils on these, on these new levels. The higher you go, the bigger the devil. You know, every day that I am operating from a peaceful existence, I am thankful because as Cicely stated, I, I'm recalling all the time where my life was in chaos and hectic. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, um, and, and I've been on this peaceful journey um, for quite some time now. And, you know, sometimes every now and again, you know, you kind of want to be like, <laughs> let me look over my shoulder and just make sure just in case um and can you have a peaceful existence forever I don't know I haven't lived for or I won't say I haven't lived forever because we are in, in eternal beings but I haven't I don't recall living forever um so I can't reflect back on everything that's happened but um so and I can't project what the rest of my life is going to be about at this moment in time but I would definitely say I would work to make sure that uh, my peace, uh, I'm, I'm having a more peaceful existence than a chaotic existence. And that comes with being accountable for the choices mm -hmm. that I make. Now, there's times when I can make the best choices in life and, you know, something out of the clear blue sky that I may have no control over may take place and catapult me out of my peacefulness and then I'm like oh my goodness well what what do I do what 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 are my battling tools that I'm going to use and I have to go steal into my my peaceful toolbox to still use those to fight even in my my chaos just so that I can possibly keep the chaos at bay so that I'm not having as much chaos as I possibly could have so I think every blue moon, my people be like, we're going to start a ride in this bitch. <laughs> oh, don't you hate when that happens? <laughs> I'd be like, a riot? Like a, riot? a whole full out riot? Like throwing bowls? Like, okay, I'm going to start a riot. I'm going to start a riot. Okay. Yeah. I'd be like, <laughs> go on and rev them up. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> I'll be down with it. That's the problem. I'll be down with the fire. Oh, man. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's tough. I, oh, man. Don't I, 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 I know that all too well. I know that all too well because I, I same with mine. I got a whole team and we got papers and everything, but then I got this little other person that come in and be like, what a shoe. I'm like, don't you do it. Don't you do it. And it, it just don't work that way. Sometimes it do, sometimes it don't. But um, yeah, new levels, new devils. It's the I higher you elevate. That. I love that. The higher you elevate, the more you are tested. And these tests are more strategic. They are mm -hmm. not the same little low vibrational test. I mean, it's all low vibrational, but it's not the same. These are very strategic done, very strategically done because you are now more strategic. The smarter mm -hmm. you are, the smarter the test it's has a, to it's be. a video game it's a real life video game that it makes, it. It, I always think of pitfall that's because that was my video game back in the day <laughs> and I would shut down the computer because I'd be playing it so long and and then it just and then the thing it just it just stopped because I, I was I, one of them bad kids okay well not bad what I was just that's good it. at this game I see that, that Cardi B little mean that's her that Cardi B <laughs> mean that's that's what I call her every time my mama say it that this Every time. That's that's why when I when you know people want to play games, I'm like, oh, we playing games? Oh, we play. I like playing games. Let's play. And I'm, I'm gonna go. It. I'm gonna go every level. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Um, 
but generally the 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 game that I play is the game of peace. So it, it's not even like I'm like out here trying to calculate and trying to, you know, uh bring your life down. No, I'm just trying to play the game of peace. But this game pitfall, pitfall, because you're always falling in this pit. Mm-hmm. And then you're in, but everything, and this was something like Stephanie was talking about, it's literally the same thing over and over and over and over at every level, except for it goes faster than um, where you were just falling in a pit. Now they're throwing a scorpion, they're throwing a snake, and then you got to go over uh, this, uh, what is it called? Like quicksand. Mm-hmm. Um then it has like an alligator in the water or something but then it gets to a point where the water and the alligator and stuff they disappear and you don't know when they're gonna pop up so then but it's the same set of things on it but it just does different things in each level and it gets harder and faster and then I used to just shut down the game because they didn't have no more levels to go because I was like hi I got you Ah!" If you're ever wondering how to see, um, how to take accountability for yourself, the one thing that I used to tell a lot of people, um, especially before I moved from Arizona, because I have a a lot of younger ladies that have come talk to me. I don't know why they was coming to talk to me, but now at this age, I understand why, because back then, if you knew me back then, you want to be my friend. If not, you want to get out of my way. Um, (laughs) But... That's honest, but I had to, I had to live this moment and the moment is doing the same thing over and over expecting different results is insanity. So Mm -hmm. you have to change your actions, your behavior, how you respond, how you receive. And so I had to learn how to do that. And once I realized that I don't want to keep going and saying, I didn't, I don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over. And I'm expecting the exact, you know, different results, but I don't want to do that no more. I want to do something different. So change has to happen within you first before anything else can change. It always goes back to the self. It always goes back to you. And a part of that change is holding yourself accountable for your actions, your decisions, your words, and also be accepting to the fact that just because you change, everybody else is not going to change. There that is. It's always the key. There that is. Everybody's not going to accept that because it's, but remember when, and you know, we've been friends for X amount of years and, it don't matter. Just because you change doesn't mean that everybody else change. And even when you hurt people and you change into accepting accountability and you go back to that hurt person, be okay with that person not wanting to deal with you. There it Thanks. Is. Be yeah, okay with that. I mean, I hurt my soul when I did that to somebody. I was like, but I'm a good person, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not to that person. No, you're not. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. I don't want to relive all. that trauma. Like even if, even in your newness and your betterness, I still remember the trauma, and so I don't want to have to continue to relive it. Mm-hmm. Because your, is- your face triggers me in that in those memories. So it's no love loss. Just because I, it's no love loss. It is what it is, but. When you hurt somebody in the, in the state that you in and you decide to, you know what, I'm going to take accountability for my actions and let me go and say something because I was wrong and I apologize. It's like, okay, cool. I'm still not dealing with you. Have a good life. Accept it. Be okay. 10 times out of 10, I'm not going to say I'm sorry. Me saying I'm sorry is me removing myself. Right. Because if yeah. I had to say I'm sorry, that meant I did some things that made me act outside my character. So I'm a holler. I, I yeah. want to act outside I'm my a- character with you. I'm going to remove myself, and that's the, the the apology for both of us. Me, to myself, right. for wasting my time. <laughs> and, and to right. you, because whatever it was, right. it was. Uh-huh. Not that sounds so bitchy, but that's really no, not. I, I support that, man. I'm with <laughs> I mean, yeah, we can support it, but what about those that don't even know what, char- what character they have? Well, so here's the thing. That's not my job to introduce you to yourself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I actually, the, the thing is, I introduced you to a new version of yourself. You didn't like it. And that's probably why we had a debate, right? That's probably why there was a, because because something in me brought out a new level of you that you were not familiar with and it made you uncomfortable or vice versa. One or other. Either, either way, allow me to reintroduce myself. Either I liked that person or I did not. But whatever it was, it made me so uncomfortable that I'm going to remove myself because I ain't, clearly I didn't like it enough to want to sit in it. 
It reminds so, me of the, uh, there's a phrase every, well, and I believe it, I subscribe to it, which is every person you meet as a representation of who you are, past, present, and future. Mm -hmm. And they may not be the exact duplicate copy. So, you know, people, I don't need me. I, I mean, exact ain't nobody do me. Yeah, we, get copy, it. we got it. We got it. But they do have some aspects of your past. They have some mm -hmm. aspects of your present or they have some aspects of your future. And so, and if you're meeting these people and they rubbing you the wrong way, past, present or future self, look at it and see mm -hmm. where it is that you can say, you know what? I got to work in my life. I may have done some things like that. And so let me work on being forgiving, not just to that person, because that's where back to accountability for self, not mm -hmm. just being a, a forgiving for their actions, but forgiving myself for yeah. those actions I did at some point in time to somebody else. And then you can also think of it, why am I going backwards? Because if, if they're a reflection of who you are, past, present, and, and future, you could be meeting somebody from a past experience. Now, that person may not physically have been in your past, but the behavior, the aura, the, the behavior patterns, the setting, the scenic route, whatever it is, is some, the essence, it's something about that person or the situation to make you think, why are you going backwards? Why am I going to the past? I, we, I did this already. Let me move forward. I especially what? like how you said the essence. Mm -hmm. And I like that because I think we're always so stuck in, you know, whatever reality looks like. Mm -hmm. And I understand in that we truly can time travel, like, and be in the essence of an experience, right? Mm -hmm. In our present moment. I was just yesterday here in Arizona physically um, standing outside discount tire and mm -hmm. all of a sudden I felt like I was in Chicago. Things now I'm moving. literally looking at my atmosphere and I'm like, I am nowhere in Chicago and I couldn't pull the memory the, the, in my mind to see why I was feeling this Chicago-ness happening, but mm -hmm. I was I was feeling it. And I was like, man, this just feels like I'm in Chicago right now. And I know good and well, I wasn't. So that essence is so important too, because sometimes it's just the essence of something. Mm -hmm. But another thing, and I've experienced this too. Um, it's not always, even if it's to pull you backwards, it could be showing you how much you've grown. Mm. Um, it's to say, mm -hmm. hey, you mm -hmm. re you're, you're ready to step to that next level because you can see something of your past that no longer bothers you but you can recognize it like mm. and when you see it even on that person you like damn that's a i hope you i hope you let that go because it's gonna that's a hard road with that one. i'm gonna that, pray that's... for you <laughs> yeah yeah like I, I no longer felt necessarily like it wasn't because i knew when i knew i had got over it was no longer anger for me but it was more so uh like a sadness uh -huh. like damn yeah i'm sorry that you're going through that like I'm, I'm sorry that you holding on to that feeling that you don't want to release. But I, my prayer is that you move and grow from that because I'm you grow it's up. Yeah, because it's so uncomfortable <laughs> and it's not fun. It's, it's dark. That's a lonely spot. So like, it's not always to say that you're moving backwards. It could be the same. And you recognizing them like, damn, I'm so happy. I'm no longer in that phase. Like, thank you. Pray for right, me. That's me. I'll, I'll, I'll be like, thank God I ain't in it. Woo. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Hallelujah. Won't he do it? So. I've been uh, in the space where I've seen diff three versions of me all in the same space too. And it was like, ooh, 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 ooh. yeah, girl, I bet you did. Yeah, yeah. I was like, let me have literally had to sit down and breathe. That was a head trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was just like so many, you know, like I said, things that I had worked through, things that I was currently working through and the future of me of what it would look like if I, when I moved past it. And mm -hmm. that was what encouraged me to keep pushing because I saw what would happen when I pushed past these things, the greatness that was attached to it, that that literally gave me the, ooh, let me cling on to that so I can move forward. Yeah. But so don't think it's a bad thing all the time when you it's start not. to see. It's not. It could definitely be signs of growth. But ladies, we got six minutes. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure we get all of our uh, Ricky Ricker DJs <laughs> out there on how to <laughs> how to communicate and contact with us um i still don't have it down pat okay i'll go go i'll go go because I, I have a lot more energy this week and mm -hmm. some sleep and things because last week y'all whoo 
We saw. We know. You, you gave it to me this week, and I've been. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. That's all I can say. I, I, nigga, we made it. So I can say, <laughs> I made it. I came with the cootie free kisses. The energy might not have been as fresh and crisp, but you know, you can't always have those days. Can't always. But can't always. Definitely made it. But so go ahead, DJ, uh, such and such. All righty. So, hey, everybody, if y'all want to check us out beyond this live today, Mm -hmm. these are the ways that you can come and continue to be with us and see all the other things that we've done that you may have missed. So we have our website. Mm -hmm. We have Spotify. Mm -hmm. We have, what is it, Apple what is it is I don't even know what it's called but I think it's Apple uh then we have um Instagram we have Facebook we have YouTube we have 15 minute consult free consultations mm-hmm. sponsor a boo and you are a boo and then also we can we can coach you yes it's it, you have to pay for it yes but you know hey Aren't you worth it? Invest in thyself. Mm-hmm. Invest in your boo. Yes. You. Absolutely. What else you got going? Oh, damn. Did I miss something? Newsletter. There you go. There you go. There you go. Boom, 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 boom. There you go. <laughs> Good job. So, yes, finally, someone has them all because... Somebody still struggle bus yeah that's what we're here for team works make the dream that's work right um, also uh give a quick shout out to all of our people in the different countries that are listening to us watching uh, well i don't know if they can watch us but y'all can come on to the uh, facebook live you facebook page and, and join us especially subscribe ladies. subscribe, subscribe mm-hmm. to us as well but just thank you for all the people that are listening to us on spotify yes. as well as well, because men are checking yes, us Yes, men as well. I hey, men, this. Hey, right. y'all. Hey, hey. hey boo. <laughs> yes, our men out there that, that are definitely listening to us and um, putting their wives and their sisters and cousins yeah, put, and everybody else on. on. Yeah, put, put, put them on. Put us on. So, you know, thank you to everybody. What is it? Germany. We got Brazil out there. Uh, the book, UK. Book, book, book. Canada, Canada, uh, Africa, and uh, a special shout out to all of you. So thank you so, so much. It means a lot to us that we have people in other countries that are actively listening to us and uh, keeping up with us. So we appreciate you guys as well. Um, Booty free kisses. Mm -hmm. Look at her. I I don't give them out, but you know, she got it. We've been doing this a year. (laughs) Yes. We have. We've been doing this a year. So, you know, we just want to say... Um, that it's work. This isn't easy. We we are having to be consistent as well. So the stuff that we telling you all, we have to practice this. What we, we are preach, yes. Practitioners. That's Absolutely. why we can say it with such passion. Okay. And what will make it seem like with such ease. Words and stuff because it's not easy at all. <laughs> no, we've done it. We've been through it or we're going through it or we see it coming. So we mm-hmm. we know, we see, we understand, which is why we say it with such, you know, animation because we need this shit. Own your <laughs> shit. <laughs> Back. Own and your shit. all what we are saying because we are living it. You and know it's get real when she start gang banging. <laughs> yesterday i need to get some uh so we need to come up with some signs because we are gang and have, have some signs and some uh some footwork steps or something so. not footwork <laughs> right like how you living boo <laughs> you know yeah, how I want, you living? Want to be gang is so bad i don't want to be a part of no gang bang <laughs> can we just have a group me can we just be a group we don't have to be a gang we can be a group we can just be a group. what happens when you from the inner city of chicago you just you know you can't help yourself <laughs> oh god it's, it's like gatorade is it in you it's just in you it's, you know you know you got that life when you're not when you're not even really that's the point but part. your cousin is and so you were standing by their side so you was you were, time about let it. me go get my mean? big cousin one time yeah you know mm-hmm. <laughs> one time. so, so thank you all for yes. continuing to rock with us 
Um, we look forward to doing this a whole nother year and giving you all more great content. And so it's just you know, it's a lot of fun around here. And I enjoy these ladies. I'm so appreciative of them. Next week, you will see two in one. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have to think, I have to think, I have to think. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right. It is noon, ladies. Namaste. 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 Out of our way. <laughs>